What's up? Hello, everybody. We're back at RimWorld. Wow. It's been some rough times going, but we're, we're finally clawing our way back. I am, for the first time, not too concerned about our immediate future. I think uh, we finally have things under control. Mostly because I see that this rice is almost ready to harvest. And once we get our first harvest of food in, we're going to be just fine. Still a little bit concerned about the baby on the way, but we'll make we'll make it work. Um, pretty soon enough, we're going to have another colonist to help take care of the place. And uh, I think we'll be at a good, a good balance of um, available workers to get jobs done pretty soon. I don't know if you can get an eye patch in this game, but I would absolutely love to get Gorilla an eye patch. He deserves one. He's going to be the best pirate warrior to ever live. So it looks like we've got a Guaranlin pod sprouted nearby. We're going to go ahead and harvest this. We haven't done anything with our other Guaranlin seed, but soon, once we have more characters that have a decent growing score, which I believe is now uh, Tronka, who has 14. Jay has a growing score of 12. And Olga, what's his growing score like? 12. Yes, yeah, so once we have an over oversaturation of people with high growing skills, we can actually assign one of them to steward a uh, Guaranlin tree. And um, for those of you who haven't played this game before, they basically, they're very high work to maintain, but they produce a bunch of uh, for like dryads, which are creatures that can work uh, for your colony. So for example, I can have a bunch of hauling dryads. And so this person spends time pruning this tree using their plant score. And in return, the tree produces a bunch of um, hauling dryads that will go around your colony and haul stuff for you. Or you can create defensive dryads or attacking dryads or um, you know wood producing dryads. There's all sorts of different options we can have. Um, usually they're not worth it when you only have a small number of colonists, but you know, if we have three colonists who are all really good at farming, we don't need three colonists to be farming full time. So we could definitely assign one of them to take care of uh, the tree instead. Like, look at this. Jay is almost single-handedly um, handling this harvest. Fantastic. So it looks like Gorilla is fully healed um, from his injuries. And um, because of his muscle parasites and his peg leg, his moving has been reduced down to 47%. But I think it'll go back up once we get his muscle parasites treated. But yeah, he's just going to be a little bit slow at moving. But I think other than the slow moving, his peg leg won't affect his day-to-day -day, um, operations very much. Once we're a little more technologically advanced, we could consider getting him like a bionic leg. But I kind of like the pirate aesthetic Gorilla's going to have going for him. So we'll have Olga recruited in a matter of days, it looks like. We're continuing to um, reduce resistance by about 0.5. I think um, that's about the same place we were at last episode. So um, in a matter of maybe a month or so, we'll get Olga recruited and moved into his new house. Now part of this needs to be getting that house prepped for him. So we're going to go ahead, build some wooden floors in here. We can build some furniture. I think we're going to go ahead and make sure Olga has a bed. I think we'll put the bed in the corner. We can put a little nightstand, an end table right next to the bed. We can put a dresser across the uh, other end of the room for him. Let's see, this will be the right orientation for that. And of course we can have an alpaca wool armchair like we have in every room for relaxation. All right, Olga, you're gonna have a great house. We're building it right now. Hopefully that'll speed up your conversion, your recruitment, knowing that you have a great house waiting for you. I have a feeling Olga's still going to be really slow. Hey, 14.4 to 13.8 is a lot better than 0 0.5. Got 0 0.6 now. So we are running a little bit short on wood, so I'm going to go ahead and give the order to do a little bit of chopping wood to the north of our base, and hopefully that should get us sorted. Our, um, our animals barely survived the winter starvation, but looks like we just about pulled through. We have at least one male and one female of alpacas and cows, which we're gonna intend to breed. And then I don't think we're gonna keep breeding yaks, but we will keep 
the adult female or maybe also this other young female as well when she grows up to just c continue producing this milk every day. I mean, just having like a steady source of food every day, like no matter what the season is, summer or winter, is a pretty nice thing to have. And it's low effort required to maintain, right? You just need to farm some hay grass for the winter and then milk them once a day. It's really not that bad. Gorilla's learning is pretty low. I hope we can get back um, on schedule with uh, Gorilla's learning. We so far have childcare set to Tronka, Minyaka, and Jay, so there should be no reason why um, Gorilla gets neglected at all. A group from the Pact of Born is visiting. We'll see if they have any good stuff um, to trade with us. We have a lot of silver, so we can afford something nice if we see it. Minyaka is just waking up. She's going to consume a simple meal. Once she's done eating her breakfast, we're going to have her go and talk to Mandrill and see about trading. Now, apparently Minyaka is pregnant in the third trimester, so this baby's going to come sooner rather than later, probably sometime in this episode, I would think, if not very early next episode. All right, Minyaka, I know it says you're resting, but I want you to go talk to the traders before you go to bed. Just a brief detour, and then we'll let you rest up. We know it's important to stay rested, you know, when you're with, with child. All right, what do they have to trade? Not much, turns out. We can buy a great boat from them. That might be a decent idea. Get some extra range. We have two Guaranlin seeds. I don't think it's necessary doing that, though we will buy all their medicine. That's definitely going to be worth it. All right, we'll buy a great bow and we'll buy some medicine. Minyaka, I need you to at least haul the great bow. So I think Tr Tronka is shooting the masterwork recurve, recurve bow, and with Tronka's great shooting skill, yeah, 11, I think that's a good move. Uh, Jay's less good at shooting, but Jay will we'll get there in time. Jay is currently shooting a normal reef curve bow. I think I'm going to move Jay to a normal um, great bow. I think great bow increases range, but sacrifices a little bit of accuracy at closer ranges. So it's really useful for keeping Jay at a distance. We don't want to charge Jay in too close. All right, so good morning, Jay. I'm going to have you wake up. I'm going to have you equip this great bow. We'll leave that normal recurve bow in here for the next time we get a colonist who wants to shoot something. Apparently the oracle role is unfulfilled. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and assign Minyaka that honor of becoming our village oracle. Minyaka failed while constructing an alpaca wooden armchair. Some resources have been wasted. Visitors from the Pact of Born are leaving. All right, good to know. Um, but before we start the ascension to Oracle, I think we're going to let Gorilla just catch up on his learning. I don't want to interrupt this. It's been a while since Gorilla actually sat down and did any learning in the classroom. We need to get his learning stat up so we can get him past growth tier 2. Alright, so it's, um, it's getting to be uh, late evening, and I think we're going to go ahead and start a role change ceremony. We're going to assign Minyaka the role of Oracle for the colony. All right, go ahead and start this at the ritual spot, begin. All right, we are building Minyaka into like the matriarch of this colony, the spiritual leader and the, um, um, the secular leader as well. All right. She is now Oracle, so hopefully people will be less upset um, about there being no Oracle in the colony. Now, does Oracle have any required um, apparel? Minyaka is in labor. Okay, so let's gather for childbirth. We need to make sure this room is clean first. So Jay, I'm going to have you clean this um, bedroom. 
and I'm gonna have us gather for childbirth. Um, who's gonna be our doctor? Uh, we need to see who's the best doctor in the colony. So Tronka has a medical skill of two. I'm pretty sure Jay has a medical skill of two as well. Okay, we'll have um, Jay do it since uh, Tronk is the father. So the father can be kind of emotional support while Jay is the professional support. So let's go ahead, Minyaka. We're gonna get ready for childbirth. Our doctor is going to be Jay. Tronka is going to be there for the childbirth. I think that's important. And let's go. Room cleanliness is should be fine. It's pretty much clean. We're gonna let Gorilla sleep though. Gorilla does not need to be here for this traumatic experience. Watching his brother or sister be born. Alright. And it's a healthy male. Sick childbirth. Never mind, it's not healthy. Childbirth total quality was 64%. The chance for healthy birth at this quality level was 89%. The baby has been given a temporary name, Baby Toxborgo. You can change it until one day after birth. So this infant has a grave infant illness. Wow. Okay, so Tronka, I'm going to need you to go ahead and rescue Toxborgo. And then Jay... I'm going to need you to go ahead and prioritize tending to this newborn baby with some medicine. It's bad that this illness started out as grave. It's already at 43% progression. And uh, I don't know exactly how this works. But hopefully the baby doesn't die. I don't see any immunity. So I don't know how this illness works. Okay, well, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. All right, well, congratulations, Minyaka and Tronka. You have another son. We need to name this kid. Come on, Toxborgo, I want to select you. Bio. Let's rename this colonist. Um, it's not going to be named Baby Toxborgo. We're going to use the Minyaka family name, and for the first name, let's just see what random gives us. Senga, sure. Senga and Gorilla. And we need to, of course, set the nickname to Senga, because Minyaka is the last name. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with this grave infant illness. But it seems like it's hovering around 50%. Maybe it's slowly increasing. Yeah, it is slowly increasing. We had a really good 10 quality, 60%. I don't know if we're going to be able to match that again. Senga might unfortunately not make it. And that might catapult Minyaka and Tronka into um, some pretty extreme grief. But it'll be what it'll be. Tronk is having some father-son time with Gorilla. He's um, teaching him all about the wonderful miracle of childbirth. Actually, maybe not at the age of five. Um, yeah, probably not at that age. That being said, this is RimWorld, so weirder things have happened. I think Gorilla is fully cured of his muscle parasites. Would you look at that? He has nothing in his health tab except for his peg leg. Look at these perfect vitals except for moving at 80% because of the peg leg, of course. Um, how's Tronka doing? Tronka is at 145 out of 300% 10 quality. Okay, Tronka's still a little ways away. Um, and Minyaka is probably going to be cured of her gutworm soon. Fantastic. Things could not be going better. Now, of course... We have dead al alpaca corpses here that we let rot in here. So we need to go prioritize hauling those. 
I think we should have Tronka prioritize cooking over growing. Tronka should be prioritizing cooking, so I don't know why we let these things spoil, because I'm pretty sure butchering counts as cooking. Oh well. Alright. Senga has been treated again. 10 quality was only half of what it was previously, and the illness is still rising. It's gonna be at a hundred percent in probably the next day or two, and I don't I don't like where this is heading. So when Minyaka is done breastfeeding the baby, we're gonna have Minyaka clean up this room so that the next 10 quality will be a little bit higher. Gets a bonus from a clean room. Minyaka is at a high break risk, so after cleaning the room, we're gonna let Minyaka have some recreational time. We have a new um, quest called Mar and the Red Foxes. A 12 year old child named Mar is calling for nearby. He says a pack of six men hunting red foxes are hunting him. He begs for safety. If you accept him, red foxes will join, will follow in an hour. Mar? I'm sorry. We've got enough kids in this colony. We can't be running a whole orphanage here. We really don't have the capacity to take care of three kids around the colony. So, unfortunately, no. Good luck with your foxes. You're 12 years old, you can figure it out. Oh my god, I'm a horrible person. I can't even say that. This game, <laughs> this game sometimes makes you say and do horrible things. It is a rather absurd game. There's a mad cougar. Maybe this is the game punishing us for not helping the kid. Oh, stop. You've got to be kidding me. There's a mad cougar, and what do you know? It's hunting our crippled child who is really far away from home. Nobody's even close to be able to help him. All right, Tronka, Jay, this is an emergency. I'm gonna need to recruit you guys. I'm gonna need you to move out here ASAP. Gorilla, I don't think he's gonna be able to get away in time. All right, Gorilla. Oh my God. No! 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 Our pirate suffered through so much adversary and came out on the other end. He had muscle parasites. He had his leg chopped off and he survived it all just to die a few days later to some hungry man-hunting cougar. This is, this is absolutely tragic. Um, all right, Tronka and Jay, uh, we need you to avenge Gorilla's death. I didn't think we'd have a colonist death this, this soon. Gorilla, this is gonna be your grave. Yep. I think Minyak is gonna have a mental break. Is this cougar not a, mad, a man hunter anymore? All right. Jay, just stay here. Shoot the cougar. Wow, you one shot the cougar. If we'd only been there just a short while earlier. Um, all right. Well, that's that. Jay, I'm gonna need you to prioritize hauling the cougar into our, our refrigerator. And Tronka, I'm gonna need you to prioritize um, bearing gorilla. Your son. What what a sad day. What a sad moment for us all. Gorilla will not be forgotten, surely. Major break risk, Minyaka? Yeah, we know. Medical emergency, Seng Senga? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like Tronka and Minyaka might lose two children in the span of like one day. Um, it's not looking good. It's really not looking good. Tronka needs to make some meals because I think eating raw food is driving everybody nuts, especially Minyaka. 
Um, Jay, I need you to do me a favor and clean this bedroom. The next time we tend Senga, we need to have a really high tend quality. Some goats have joined the colony. Wow, that's just what we need. Um, we're going to go ahead and slaughter these goats, but we're going to escort them back to the pen before we do any slaughtering. We don't need to keep goats around. I don't know what goats do other than maybe provide milk, but we've got cows for that. Cows also produce a lot of meat. I think cows are probably better at producing meat than goats are. Um, for some reason, we are not getting around to automatically refueling these passive coolers either, which is why stuff is expiring in our fridge so quickly. Extreme break risk, Minyaka, we know, we know. Um, unfortunately, there's not much we can do. Colonist needs rescue. Who? Minyaka is now moving Senga to a safer temperature. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't think, uh, Senga's surviving the night. Alright, Tronka, I need you to clean this room. And good, you're already going to tend Senga. Good, use the best quality medicine we have. Come on, let's go. 35%, I don't, I don't think that's gonna cut it. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't think Senga's gonna last the night. Um, Minyaka, why are you why are you letting Senga on the floor outside? Keep Senga inside. Jeez. Oh boy. So I think one thing that um, Minyaka can do as an oracle is counsel grief, increase some uncertainty, no, counsel, um, offer counsel to a person to cancel the effect of a sad memory. Can she counsel herself? No, but she can counsel Tronka, but we'll have to deal with this later. Um, there is a raid underway. One bad thing after another is plaguing our colony. They're coming at us with a steel axe and a steel mace. It's nothing we can't handle. All right, Jay and Tronka, let's get out there. Let's get ready. These guys are not messing around. All right, here we go. You gotta shoot better than that. You really gotta shoot better than that. Okay. There you go. One down. Okay, I need you both to melee attack this person. I think two on one, we might be able to win even though this guy has a much better weapon. All right, congratulations. We live to, to fight another day, but oh my gosh. At what cost? Jay, just a bruise and a crack. Okay, we'll survive. We'll survive for sure. Senga on the other hand, 97, yeah, okay. Yep. I think it's only a matter of hours. 98, I don't even want it. I don't even want to see. Such a tragedy has befallen this colony. Oh my gosh. How will we ever recover? Well, I'll say one thing. We don't need plans for a third bedroom in the house anymore. <sighs> Senga has died. I mean, what can we expect? This is just kind of like the fact of the matter with low levels of technology child uh, mortality rates were really high. 
Um, that's just the way of the world, I guess. We're going to need to build another grave. Is that a misc? We'll go ahead and build a grave for Senga right next to uh, his brother's grave. Minyaka and Tronka um, might not make it over the next couple days. Minyaka, I would like you to counsel Tronka wherever Tronka is. I'd like you to, to give him some emotional support. And I wish there was someone to give you emotional support as well, but... For the time being... Oh, she botched the attempt to counsel Tronka, and Tronka has just become upset. You know, that's fair. They're going to need to really rely on each other in the next few, few days. Um, Jay, I'm going to need you to go ahead and bury Senga. We're not going to let Tronka and Minyaka go to sleep with their dead child still in the crib. Oh my gosh. Tronka and Minyaka are about to have an extreme break. Of course, Minyaka might still have gut worms. Yeah, still has gut worms. I'm sure Tronka still has muscle parasites. Yep, that's probably not helping things either. I'm actually surprised they've lasted this long without having a mental break. Like, what is Minyaka doing all the way out here? Oh, just leading the goats to the pasture, okay. Well, let's go to animals. Let's look at our goats. And let's slaughter them. We're gonna give Tronka and Minyaka an appropriate grieving period, and then we're gonna ask them to start trying for a baby again. Um, I think there's really only one thing that can fill that hole in their heart, and that's gonna be having a child that they can pour all their love and attention into. So summer has begun. Wow, time flies. We're already done with springtime. Well, not much to show for it except for dead bodies piling up. Tronk is clawing his way back. Um, he's no longer at an extreme break risk. Once this council cooldown finishes, we're going to have Minyaka council Tronka again, but it's really Minyaka I'm worried about. Look at these mood penalties. My child... Okay, each of them is minus 20. That's horrible. Plus being in pain from, uh, from her gut worms is causing another minus 10. On top of that, she's been eating raw food. On top of that, her affection for Gorilla and Senga is giving a further minus five and minus six. And then just the general minus five for any colonist dying is also applying. She wants Oracle apparel. Apparently she wants a cape. Can we build a cape? No. I don't know why we set ourselves up with that stupid restriction. We don't have a cape. All right, well, we had an alpaca self tame. Sure, we'll take it. Some extra wool. Not that any research has gotten done at all this year. Somehow, our colonists always manage to find other things to worry about other than the most critical task, which is research. I know that's because I literally told them to do all these other things before research, but Eventually, we need to get around to doing research. Maybe I do need to set it at a higher priority. I'm just worried that if we set research at too high a priority, then other important tasks are just not going to get done. <sighs> oh boy. We have a mega sloth around here eating our precious food. Maybe we need to start fencing off our... fencing off our... fields. A wild woman wanders in. A person living among wild animals has wandered into the area. She's called Sano. You can attempt to tame her. What's up with this woman? She's an impid. That means she's bad at farming. She's bad at animals. She has weak melee damage, but she's super fast. She's very heat tolerant, but she's 
Uh, sensitive to cold. I don't think she'll do well here if she's sensitive to cold. I mean, maybe we could try to pick her up, but that depends on her skills. She's got social level 7. She's got animals level 5. That's actually not bad. Mining level 5. These are some skills that we don't have in the colony already. She's tough. Ah, but she's an undergrounder. You know, I really don't want to take in an undergrounder. She's going to get a mood penalty for being outside. and Most of our colony is kind of an open plan. It's a very outdoorsy colony, right? We don't have everything confined to one giant complex building. Cause I, I don't like building bases like that. It doesn't seem realistic. I, not that this game is realistic to begin with, but it just seems nicer to like give colonists their own houses, you know? Have buildings that mean specific things. Like have a barn and have a storage shed and have a have kind of like a food gathering area, you know? Alright, Orange Senpio, Animal Chief, Anima Chief of the Pact of Born is requesting a favor. Her friend Royaro Croucha is interested in learning about other cultures and she wants you to host him at Azwar for thir for 18 days. Croca will not do any work and will just hang around our colony and eat our food. Now, in return, she is offering us a Silent Neuroformer, consumable architect created device that forms or upgrades a Psylink in the user's mind. Okay, so we could potentially get Psylink um, psychic powers without impressing the Empire. We could take Luke as a new join. Now Luke is a 29 year old male who kind of sucks at everything except for construction. So would primarily be a builder, but I don't think we'd be interested in taking in Luke just because of the zero shooting and melee skills. That's really bad. We need people who are capable of defending the colony. Um, I don't think we're going to take this. We're, we're short on food as it is. Um, we definitely don't need to, to do this. This corpse is rotting already in here. I don't know what's happening. Why... Why Tronka isn't getting around to doing his butchering tasks. If we look at Tronka's priority, he should be spending his number one priority is just cooking. So I, I don't know why Tronka isn't cooking at a fast enough rate to, to keep up with all the demand. Alright, Tronka, I need you... No, not Jay. Tronka, I need you to prioritize hauling this this rotting cougar out of here. We can't have anything rotting in our fridge. That's bad. All right, and then continue cooking meals. Thank you. All right, this uh, wild impid woman is running around the colony. We're not going to try to tame her. It's just not worth it. Um, She's eating our food. I don't like that. I really don't like that. Can we like scare her off or something? I don't know. Tronka's muscle parasites are still below 200%, so he's still going to be stuck with them for a little while. Minyaka is still going to be stuck with her gut worms for a little while too. Jeez, not good. How are we doing with recruiting Olga at least? At least we brought Olga all the way down to 6.3 resistance. We'll have Olga in a matter of uh, days. Okay, that's at least some good news. That's at least some very good news. And I'm really actually impressed with Minyaka. Minyaka has managed to not have a mental break despite her abysmal, abysmal uh, mood. Does she have like special traits or something that prevent her from having a break? Not that I can see. I don't know what's keeping her afloat, but she's staying afloat and we appreciate it. Of course, her husband just had a mental break and he's in a daze. Now, dazes are awful. They just wander around being useless, sometimes wandering directly into harm's way. 
and dazes can last for days on end. I don't know if you guys remember, a daze is what Jay had um, in the last episode, and Jay was just completely useless. Now Tronka is now wandering around in the daze, so this is very much not good. Okay, I think we're going to end the episode here. It's been a trying time, right? I was so optimistic at the start of this episode. I said things were looking up. We're finally getting a, a handle on things again. And then we lose two children and drive the, the, the parents to absolute, you know, their absolute mental limits. You know, Tronka just broke under the pressure and I don't blame him. So thank you guys so much for watching and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.